The SEMrush keyword research tool can be extremely valuable, both for organic marketing and pay-per-click marketing if you're trying to run ads on Google Ads or wherever. So let's take a look at how to do some basic keyword research and analyze the different keywords in different niches. So for this example, we're going to be using Keto Diet. And if you don't already have a SEMrush account, I'll leave a, a link down below where you can get signed up for a free trial and use all these different features I'm going to show you. But once you're signed into your account, you can just take a keyword and put it into the top search bar up here and click search. That's going to give us a whole bunch of data about this specific keyword and a bunch of related keywords. So if we're looking at this from an organic marketing frame of mind, we can see that this keyword gets a lot of traffic, 250,000 searches a month, but it's extremely difficult, very hard to rank for organically through SEO. And that's going to be because it's a very broad term. There's a lot of big websites ranking for that term, meaning authoritative websites. And so it's going to be a little bit difficult to rank for that organically. But it might be a good keyword for us to run Google Ads on. We can see that the cost per click is only 84 cents, which is relatively low. And the uh, competition is also kind of in the middle, so that's good. Like There are some people advertising on the term, but not too many. And it does get a lot of search traffic, so we might be fine to advertise on this term with pay-per-click ads. But once we see that the intent is informational, that might kind of sway us away from running pay-per-click ads on this term. So the intent behind a, a search term basically just means like what is the person trying to achieve when they search this keyword? And an informational term usually just means people are trying to find out more information about that term. So when somebody search, searches something about the keto diet or just keto diet, they're probably wanting to learn more about that diet, how it works, what food they can eat, all that sort of stuff. Whereas something like um, keto diet foods might be more uh, commercial in nature in the intent, meaning people are actually looking to buy food that is keto friendly. And so you can see that there's a lot more competition on this keyword. And that's probably because people are trying to sell keto food, right? So knowing the intent of the search is extremely valuable so that you can determine how to best market when somebody searches for that term so if this term that you're trying to go after like keto diet is very informational in nature that means that it's predominantly going to be blog posts that end up ranking organically and generate a bunch of traffic and then people use their blog posts to then build a newsletter, sign up list, you know, a list that they can then market to, etc. So these are a bunch of really big websites we can see here in the SERPs analysis, which is just the websites that are ranking for this keyword that we put into the top here. And so these blog posts are just like, you know, the keto diet 101, like everything you should know about the keto diet, right? So that is extremely helpful. And then I kind of already showed you this, but it's showing us other terms here that we can explore. And when we pop into some of these other terms, we'll see varying degrees of difficulty to rank for on SEO. We'll see varying intent for the terms that people are searching and search volume, et cetera, et cetera. And even the pages that are ranking here. Now, this is kind of both intent, informational and commercial in nature because we do see quite a few blog posts in here as well but we're probably also going to see like specifically in the ads we would see people trying to sell keto food right and if we're trying to rank for terms organically we can come back to this main topic here we can click to view all the different keywords that somebody would search for in relation to keto diet and we can start picking these apart and filtering them down to keywords that we might want to target. And to do that, we could say like, all right, we want anything that has, you know, like at least a decent search volume. Let's go from like 100 to 100,000. So that will give us stuff that actually has search volume, right? 
and then we can go with keywords that are going to be in a difficulty level that we can actually rank for, which is probably going to be like 0 to 40, somewhere in there. So we can filter by keyword difficulty and search volume, which now gives us a whole bunch of keywords that have a medium keyword difficulty, which means it's going to be easier to rank organically for those terms. And also, these keywords are going to have some degree of search volume, right? We could then export that list of keywords, download the Excel file, and go through and analyze those 165 keywords and figure out exactly which ones we want to rank for, see if they're intentional in search intent, or excuse me, informational in their intent. If they are, we can write some blog posts about them. If they're more commercial intent, we can write maybe a sales page slash blog post, right? And start creating a whole bunch of content that we can rank for organically. We could also set up similar filters if we want to run some pay-per-click ads. So we could say, all right, we want to run pay-per-click ads on anything that's commercial or transactional and anything that has a cost per click that is below $1. And here we go. Now we have a whole bunch of keywords that are commercial intent or transactional intent that we could try advertising on pay-per-click ads. So that would be like Google ads, even Microsoft ads is similar. Um, and see if we can start getting some sales coming in from there. So depending on what type of advertising you're trying to do, you can analyze what's going to be the best approach, analyze, figure out what the best keywords are, export those, and just start going after the advertising for those. So I hope you found this helpful. If there's anything you did have questions about in terms of um, SEMrush, keyword research, or anything of that nature, don't hesitate to reach out. You can just drop your questions in the comments section down below, and I'll be sure to get back to them there. If you're like most new business owners, you're probably struggling to get your online presence established, let alone get it to the point where it's bringing you a consistent flow of customers, right? <laughs> so that's why I created this free course where I actually walk you step by step through the whole process of setting up your online presence. This is the same process we've been using for our clients for over a decade in one of my agencies. And essentially, I'm going to show you how to set up an SEO-friendly business name right from the get-go, how to develop your website really quickly and easily, how to set up your Google Maps listing, start getting some Google reviews, everything you need in order to have a substantial online presence where people can actually start finding you and, and purchasing your products or services. <laughs> the best part is I'm going to show you how to do it in under a couple of hours and all for less than 50 bucks. If you're interested, I'll leave a link below where you can get signed up today. Make sure to check this course out for free right now because I'm probably going to start charging for this at some point in the future. All right, I'll see you on the other side.